We've got the legend Tony Kanan here in studio. We've also got youngster Matt Lace joining us in studio as well. Guys, good morning. How you doing? Morning. Morning. Good to have you guys here. Tony, you and I actually go back quite a ways. I was working in Kansas City, and the circuit came through the Kansas Speedway, and I had you on the show that was probably 10 or 11 years ago, so it's good to yeah. have you back on. Yeah, no, it's nice to see you, man. It's uh, You look better. We look better now. Yeah, you look then. better. I don't know about <laughs> me. You look better. It's amazing because from a health standpoint, you're not just a racer. You're an athlete. You're not just a driver. You're an athlete. You cycle all the time. You do uh, triathlons and yeah. things like this. I mean, you really keep yourself in amazing shape. Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, people don't relate that race car drivers are really athletes that they think the race car is not that tough to drive but yeah. it, it actually is but i love sports i've always been uh, uh, very active so uh, for me um it's part of, it's part of my routine uh for me obviously i'm 43 years old you know uh, uh, uh as you you know you talk about sports all the time how short of uh, professional career we have any in any sports as you get to your 40 you're not good anymore so I've always tried to keep myself in shape, so uh, I'm lasting a little bit longer than usual, which is good. So, but I, yeah, I love working out and uh, I love keeping myself in shape, not just because of my professional career, but also it's a lifestyle. You've won the Indy 500. You've done everything in this sport possible. What is more difficult, at Indy 500, or is it pushing yourself at cycling or pushing yourself at running or doing something like a marathon? I think it's the mo the most difficult part. It's it's to keep yourself motivating to do a marathon. You know, the, the racing becomes, to me, it's natural, right? And winning or losing a race, it's part of it. I know how difficult it is, but that I, that's what I know what to do. I've been doing it for, you know, 30-plus years in my life. But it's amazing how, you know, the, the, we were talking, I was talking to Mateos this morning. If you don't drive the race car for a week, you still jump in the race car and you're as fast as you were a yeah. week ago. You don't work out for a week. You feel it. You're feeling it. <laughs> so that is very brutal. So I think in a way we are very fortunate that the sport that we chose it doesn't, you don't have to drive the car every day, yeah. you know, to still be good at it. Right. Tony Kanan joins us. Mateus Laced also joins us here from IndyCar. And Mateus, you're 19 years old. Yeah. When you look at Tony at 43, do you go, man, that's old. <laughs> I don't even know what that age even feels like. Yeah, he's the same age as my dad and my mom. <laughs> <laughs> that's so low. <laughs> Such a low blow. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's crazy. But it's good, you know. I grew up watching Tony and Elio race in IndyCar. And now I have the opportunity to be racing with him. You know, I'm his teammate. So such a nice, has been such a great year for me. You guys both br grew up in Brazil. How yeah. different is Brazil, the Brazil that you know that you grew up in 30 years ago versus the Brazil that Matt grew up in? Well, I think, you know, like everywhere, evolution has been technology. You know, we I didn't have half of the resources yeah. that these kids have nowadays. And uh, it's funny because, uh, you know, we're a few generations apart, you know, and especially in racing when we were trying to talk about when I was starting go-karting and when he started go-karting. I mean, now they have even the go-karts have telemetry, have computers that you can download. We didn't have any of that. So it has it has actually, uh, you know, progressed a lot, which is it's it's a huge gap. If you would have grown up now, like in Mateus's day, and become a driver now, do you think you would have been a better driver earlier? Or because of lack of technology, do you think it actually helped your instincts in your driving? It, it, in my opinion, obviously, I'm old school. I think nowadays that is too much technology. We're even, even talking about that. Even nowadays, people rely too much on computers. Or you go, okay, we have a problem in the car. Oh, let me check the computer. Before, it was like, we have a problem... Tony, what do you think this is? Yeah. So I think the computers help, but I'm I think in our generation we've we had to be more like, you know, more detailed and then be more your instinct. You still use them, but nowadays you have a computer that sometimes even the engineers doubted what we're saying. But that's something that I try to tell my, my Mateos all the time. I said, look, if the computer says something different, you're feeling something completely different. Always trust yourself. Yeah. Tony Kanan and Mateus Lace joins us here on the show. This is so interesting. Now, Mateus, you're a big hip-hop fan, right? You're a big mm. rap fan. Who are your favorite rappers? <laughs> Probably Drake right now. Okay. Yeah. That's always but, an but easy I mean, answer. I, I think since I'm a kid, I always listen to Eminem. So he's probably my favorite one. And nowadays, just Drake. 
It feels like Drake has every hit on the radio now. Yeah, Everywhere. Crazy, crazy, isn't everything it? that Drake puts out seems like, <laughs> seems like it's, a, it's hit. a massive yep. hit, right? Yeah. I mean, everywhere you go this summer, whether it's at a bar or a club or a pool or an apartment building or on the street, it feels like Drake is being played. Yeah. So it's just kind of everywhere. And, and in Brazil, is American hip hop a big deal? Yeah, it is. I think it's growing quite a lot, to be honest. Hasn't been like... So when I was in Brazil like five years ago, it was not that huge, but now it's growing quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. You guys are both soccer fans. Well, you can't be a Brazilian and not be a soccer exactly. fan. Exactly. Yeah. All right. What did you guys think about the World Cup? Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible for us. But I think it was kind of expected. You know, uh, I think Brazil is hurting right now. And, and that's the problem, right? You win five of them and you create this reputation and Brazilians are very spoiled. We say that because we're the only country that won five times. Yeah. So when you go into the World Cup, you just you can't expect you're gonna just gonna expect them to win, you know. And and you know nowadays Europe became if you guys follow soccer, the people that don't, but Europe became extremely powerful and, and much better than us in soccer. So you, you can see over the years that it's the dominance that we used to have. We still produce a lot of good athletes, but yeah, this year was. You know, I think Neymar, um, which is our best player, um, kind of stepped on his own foot. They, we gave him all the responsibility to carry a team on his back, and we know that that doesn't work. I mean, I follow a lot of basketball in America, and I know people over years, you know, you count on Kobe to, to carry the Lakers or LeBron. I mean, you know, it's not a one-man game. And, and I think that's what happened to us. Do you think that Neymar couldn't do it because he's not a LeBron or a Kobe or because he's too young? He's not He's not that type of player? Nah, or... Yeah, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I think uh, he's he's very young, but also we put a responsibility on him. But also I don't think he has the maturity yet to take that responsibility on him, to be honest. You saw, if you watch some of the games, I mean, he's the biggest... Uh, you know, people make fun of him all the time now. He falls all the time. And I think it was really bad for his image. I was reading an article that they said that his value was cut in 35% after the World Cup. So I don't think he had the maturity to uh, to be the leader. And we want him to be the leader because you're desperate. You just want to win. And he's an awesome player. But I don't think, you know, there's a big difference being a good player and a, you know, and a good player and the leader of the team. Yeah, I think that's so interesting because Neymar is so talented. But can he be the captain? Can he be the leader? And, that, and that's that's the question that we always ask. You know, he's still very young, so I think he's still got a couple more World Cups on him. So we might expect that. But, you know, how many times, how many athletes will see that are awesome players, but that's it. They're not the leaders. So I think that's what we're lacking right now. Mateus, you're a young guy on social media. You have a Twitter account. You've got a social media presence. Neymar blows it up on social media. He's always doing something on Snapchat or Instagram yeah. or Twitter. Yeah. Do you feel like as a young cat that you want to do those same things or do you kind of just want to focus on racing at this point in your career? Kind of. I think I should... I should do a little bit more for my social media. You know? You're the first 19 year old ever that says I should be he's, doing he, more. He's yeah. very chill. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I kind of. I don't know. Sometimes I feel a little bit old school. You know. Yeah. Most 19 year olds. I feel like Tony and all the other drivers posting more stuff that I do. I just sometimes I just don't care that much. You know. It's kind of twisted, right? The 43 year old is <laughs> yeah. posting more than the 19. <laughs> but uh, that's. Uh, I think social media. I've learned it's a great tool to engage with the fans nowadays you know dear but to me you got to be careful i mean i have kids i have you know three kids they're starting to get interest so you, you need to you see how many times people can get really in trouble nowadays with yeah. social media but the way i use it it's actually to connect with with the fans tony canon joins us here in studio so does mateus laced now let me ask you tony if you've got somebody that's coming after you on twitter and they're bagging on you they're trying to criticize you do you engage there? Do you try to be the nice guy? Do you do you clap back a little bit? No, I think everybody's entitled of an opinion. And then I think you could come here on the show on Monday after the race and say, man, Tony Cannon did a terrible job on that start. And that's your opinion, and that's a fact. I think there are ways to get to approach the situation. And you, you, you know you're not stupid. You know when somebody's approaching you to try to be controversial or just because they're hiding behind the phone or not. So depending on what it is I engage, but my favorite thing to do is if the guy that is starting to get 
trying to get an attention or, you know, some, some people do that. So you reply so they can get a little bit more followers because this is all about followers. Right. Now. What I do, I just retweeted or I replied just like with a little smiley face or something, and then my fans will go after him. So that's that's the best way. You and then put I just, your army on <laughs> Exactly. They go after them, and I just look. But I tell they you. do I, your dirty work. Exactly. So I don't want to put myself in, in that position of, you know, fighting over the Internet. That's I think it's – I'm not a very confrontational guy, but – you know, I, I'll let you express your opinion and I'll give you mine if I think it's suitable. If not, I'll leave I'll leave for my fans. I think I think about this sometimes watching you guys race that for so many of us, yeah, racing cars sounds really cool, but it would be terrifying. It would be so scary to be driving at the speeds that you guys drive at and then potential wrecks and, and crashes and what have you. But I feel like you guys probably don't get scared at anything. When's the last time you were not just scared in a race car, but when's the last time you were scared even from a spider or a snake? No, it's funny, though, because people think that just because we drive at 240 miles an hour, we're, we don't get scared about anything else. That that doesn't apply. I mean, I'm scared of the dark. Okay. Um, I'm scared of my wife when she's mad. That's a, <laughs> that is a fact. <laughs> but And then actually, I... Funny enough, and Mateus know this, knows this, but I'm actually scared of flying, and that's what I do huh. the most. Yeah. How do you but, calm yourself down when you fly so much? No, I mean, I'm not like, I don't get extremely nervous. I mean, you know, you have, over the years, with with all the the anticipation before a race, before a big race, or before, I mean, you learn how to deal with your anxiety. Yeah. But I just try to listen to music or watch a movie. But, I mean, it's not that I, I'm... I'm nervous when we take off. I'm nervous when the plane, like yesterday, we're flying into New York and it was raining a lot and it was bumpy. Yeah. I'm like, man. And I think it's more, as a race car driver, it's more of, I'm afraid, afraid of things that I have no control because we have this thing. You, you control your own destiny. You control when you're driving. So like even coming here with the driver that brought me here, I'm like, I'm looking. I'm like, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so I think it's more of a, the control freak thing that um, it scares me not to be in control yeah Mateus, what's the last time you've been scared uh that's a tough question you, you're scared of anything he's like yeah. he's not scared yeah it's true. Come on. that's I, really I'm true scared of heights probably but you know i'm okay <laughs> I, so I don't just... know i'm probably <laughs> yeah. too young to talk about it. i don't true. have kids and anything you know <laughs> but heights is a good one when you fly and you look out the the window is it a little scary when I fly I'm, all, I'm actually okay i'm not that bad but when i'm like nah high apartment or something yeah. and I go like to the, the top. balcony. <laughs> yeah. So no skydiving so for you. Mm, no, no. I've never tried. I mean, I would never do that. Yeah, I think I would do that. Yeah, my fiance asked me the other day, would you ever go skydiving? And I said, I don't think so. I'm like you, I'm I'm bad with heights. And then the idea that I'm just getting pushed out of an airplane. Yeah, no, but but also the, it goes back to the control thing because before you skydive by yourself, you have to do it with somebody else, correct? Right. If what I understand. So what do you mean you're jumping with somebody? What about if the dude forgets to pull the thing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing because you're driving 240 miles an hour. But I'm doing it. But you're doing it, yes. right. And so you feel like it's okay. You feel like you're safe. Yeah. It's so good to have you guys here in studio coming up August the 19th. That's Sunday, NBC Sports Network, the ABC Supply 500 at Pocono. Pocono is always fun to race, isn't oh, it? It's, and it's you know one of the longest races that we do, apart from the Indy 500. It's 500 mile, uh, 500 mile race. And... Uh, very fast racetrack. I mean, uh, they call the tricky triangle. It's only three corners, but uh, there are three different corners. Very fast, very fast. It's probably the fastest uh, average speeds that we're gonna do in the year, apart from the for the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So I'm really excited. Obviously, ABC, it's our sponsor and the car. They're sponsoring the race. They're gonna have more than 800 uh, employees there to cheer us, uh, us up. So it's a big responsibility, but uh, you know. You guys are, you know, around New York. It's only a couple hours drive, yeah. and, and uh, it's a fun race to watch. And it's a beautiful area, especially in the summer. The Poconos, yeah. the summer, yeah. and August so. is just awesome. Mateus, pre-race Drake in the earbuds to get you all fired up? Yeah, probably. All right. Always. Probably. He has his little, like, wireless <laughs> phones and yeah, headphones. Just, just to relax, you know, I got a little bit calm. Very cool. Mateus, I think we, me and DA, we need to, DA, let's do this. He needs to do Kiki.